Mm, the Deadpool event is here again. It appears similar to last year, where there are offers for money and for units. But different than last year, there's unfortunately no way to spend gold. Wait a minute. What's this? The oversaturated market? Interesting. This event also existed last year, where you gained an extremely small number of points each time that you used your Deadpool champions. But I didn't have access to this event last year. Easy, Seno5 saying, BG, can you ask chat how many of them are going for 5-star Redpool? And what is their current score? I have 109. Interesting. Dude, speaking of, I don't even have access to the event to see how to like how it's scored but I was talking to maximus today uh, and he he filled me in on the details of the event uh good luck to anyone actually grinding for red pool i wonder how many people are actually going to share where they're at and how many people are just going to keep quiet no free to play player had this event last year in the entire history of the contest the only way to gain entry to events like this that reward Red Deadpool is by already owning a star level, any star level version of Red Deadpool. Has Kabam messed up? Have they made a mistake so big that they'll never financially recover from this? I have waited seven years for this moment, and I don't know if we'll ever get it again. How do I gain points? Only the top 500 players get this champion. Looks like it's only eligible to gain points in the arenas, duels, and alliance quest. Using, of course, the Deadpool champions. And the players that have red Deadpool, they're going to gain two points for every fight. Which puts me at a severe disadvantage. The arenas and duels, well, those are quite limited. You know, I can get a few free ones in, but it's going to cost a lot of units to gain more points than that. There's also a Lion's Quest. Now, that's interesting. As someone who stepped away from Alliance activities nearly nine months ago, I have only one question. How the fuck do I start an Alliance Quest? I chose Map 2 of Alliance Quest for a couple of reasons. The first is that it's incredibly dense. There's a high number of fights with a low number of blank nodes to traverse, which is perfect for a solo AQ. Plus, they're easy fights for champs that I don't exactly have ranked up. Now, there were a couple of blank nodes at the start, so unfortunately it doesn't give me the greatest start, but it's a start. Next, we're going to take it to the arenas, but I noticed something here too. Look at the opponent. Redpool, Gwenpool, Goldpool. Okay, yeah, this person's going for it. And this kind of worried me a little bit, so I take it to the duels to see how fast that is. I type in Boogerface, naturally, and I'm pretty impressed with how quickly you can gain points dueling. Of course, it's the most expensive option, but after looking back at my free options in the arena, I realized I made a mistake. I didn't even throw in Venom Pool. I put in Venom, so I didn't even get the points there, combined with the, you know, faster speed in duelings. I ended up just sticking with duels for the most part. 824 points and counting. No one knows that I'm doing this grind, and I'd like to keep it that way. You see, if more people understand that this is their only opportunity to ever get this champion without spending money, then more people will decide to grind. The scores will go up. The number of units that need to be spent will also go up. Which brings me to my next problem. You see, as my points continue to climb, my units climb backwards. How can I keep this a secret while continuing to stream every single night the next two and a half days until the grind ends? Well, for that, we need to enter phase two. Deception. You see, I started with over 20,000 units, and people will know that. Now I have fewer than 16,000 units. It'll be a dead giveaway. Until it's not. Suddenly, we're back to 20,000 units. How can that be? Well, pretty simple, actually. It's just a stream overlay. The same way that I can overlay an image of a big D. Or, perhaps, the cutoffs. It's exactly the same. It's just an image being placed on screen. But that has its limitations as well. You see, as we transition screens, it becomes obvious that that 20 up there, that's not real. Luckily, I've thought about this, and I've planned ahead. 
Over the past few days and weeks, I've been experiencing technical difficulties with my capturing device, making it so that sometimes my gameplay cuts out. Now it's going to cut out in a different way. You see, it's quite obvious if I only cover up the units. But what if my capturing device was freeze framing certain bits of data, like an entire column of data? Hmm. Perhaps still too obvious that it's covering up the exact column of data that shows my units. Okay, let's expand that. Now, when I start the stream, this is what we'll be showing. There are actually three columns of data on this screen that are frozen, including the most obvious, which is on the left side of the screen, the white column. When I start the stream, I'll say, I don't know what that is. The technical difficulties, they continue. You may notice I have a big white line on the left side of my screen. Couldn't tell you what it is. Oh, it should be easy enough for someone to tell that. That's actually part of the loading screen. It's all white with a couple of spots on it that are barely visible, which will be just hidden enough to be believable that I don't know what that is and what's going on. Then I will, of course, go to certain areas of the game that I have pre-planned, such as Story Quest. Keep your eyes on Book 2. It's going to be there for a while. Perhaps someone will uh, ask to see my masteries. Of course, no one will, but we'll go there anyway. And as I go through and show my masteries and explain what they are, there'll be certain times where certain bits of the masteries, they continue just to sort of hang out, and they'll be there through the rest of the stream. And as we go back to a different screen through the loading screen, well, part of that will hang around too. Before you know it, the screen will be so glitched out that, well, it won't be too obvious that the units are the main thing that are being covered up. The trick is to make this happen as seamlessly as possible. One mistake and my cover will be blown. Wait, there's three? What above my head? Well, that's lovely. Um, I guess we're just gonna power on through it and, uh, you know, whatever. Let's dump some energy. God. Lines in the sand? Are you asking questions about lines in the sand? It's just lines in the sand question mark. It's been a little while since I've gone over the, the how to beat masochism. I mean, I mentioned mastery, right? You can get, uh, you can pick up the despair mastery. That's really the only mastery that's gonna help you out. You still wanna check your other stuff here. Make sure you have, uh, you know, recovery, willpower, all that good stuff, but otherwise, um, just make sure you're good there. But. Dog, there's more lines. That happened, I, I mean, that must have happened when I went to the actual masteries themselves, huh? But it's not me, guys. It's my capture card. Damn this thing. Damn technology. Damn technology. It's not gonna be the prettiest, I'll tell you that much. But, you can technically do it. Um, Basically, you you just know that you have like a like an end of life, like you're gonna die at some point, um, and just get in as much damage as you possibly can beforehand. Wait, is that true? Actually, that might not be true because, oh no! Well, everyone, there it is. The final score, 2,241 points, which, as a reminder, is 2,241 individual matches completed. It came at a pretty hefty price of roughly 11,000 units in total, which would sting a bit if it weren't for the sweet victory of getting a six-star red Deadpool. Something that has been completely off limits up until now. 11,000 units to break down the final paywall and defeat Kabam. They will never lock me out of content ever again. Unless they release another character.